Good day, this is Jim Pytel from Columbia Gorge Community College, Renewable Energy Technology Program. This is EET 122, Digital 2. Today we are going to have a discussion about latches. And let's take a second before we go into electronics land and take a detour to dictionary land and just think about the word latches. Um, a latch, you know, if you latch a door, ideally, if you latched a door and walked away from it and came back later, you would expect it to have stayed latch. And conversely, if you've unlatched a door, you could walk away from it and come back later on and you would expect it to be unlatched. Um, it's not like it's gonna suddenly flip on you to the, another state. And that's exactly what a latch is. It's something that's bi-stable. There are two stable states. It's latched, unlatched, a door, it's locked or unlocked. There's no in between. There's nothing in between locked and unlocked. There's there's no nothing such as a simultaneously locked and unlocked door. You know, if you're in Bingen or Wishram, chances are your door is locked at all times. Chances are in Hood River, if you're living in Hood River, your door is unlocked. You know, music. You know, there's two types of music. There's country and western. Beer, Bud and Bud Light. There's only two states. Nothing in between. Nothing can ever simultaneously exist. Now that we've had some fun in dictionary land, let's go back to electronics land. Okay, so everything we've been doing up to this point in digital has been this type, where you've got an input and an output. Let's do another gate here, another input, another combo inputs, another output. You know, this is not really hard given A and B and C and D. You can figure out what X and Y is. Now, how about this? Okay, still two two input NAND gates. But that guy's input is that guy's output. And that guy's input is that guy's output. Not so easy now, eh? Okay, so in this configuration, basically, the output from the first gate, let's call this gate one, is the input to gate two. And gate two's output is the input to gate one. You know, basically, you're getting feedback from the output, it's feeding back to the input, okay? You could super easily lose yourself in a game of which came first the chicken or the egg here so let's not do that let's deal with something we call just initial conditions so it's assuming initial conditions someone lays a latch on your doorstep and it has initial conditions and the initial conditions for this particular latch right here this is an active low sr latch so let's talk we're just going to use the active low sr latch for this discussion. And an active low SR latch, let's draw it here. So that's what it looks like. And we're gonna have an input here called not S and not R. And we're gonna have two outputs, Q and not Q. So assuming initial conditions, what we say it comes out of the package with, there's a one on both inputs and a one on Q. Not Q should be a zero. So the first thing you should do right now is does this make sense? Do the even initial conditions make sense? So knowing what we know about a NAND gate, it's truth table, zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one. The only time a NAND gate's low is when both inputs are high. Okay, so let's start at gate one. It's got a one for one input. It's got a zero for the other input. So one zero gives us a one. Good to go. Okay, gate two. What's it got for one input? It's a one. What's its other input? It's this one right here, because it's traveling into there. And it put, uh, so one one, and its output is a zero. We're good to go. Okay, always check your initial conditions to make sure it makes sense. Okay, 
So these, again, active low SR latches. What is an active low? It requires a zero to get something done. The S stands for set. So it requires a zero on not S because it's active low to set the latch. And what we've created in our initial conditions here is a set state. A set state is when Q equals one. Okay. So again, Q is equal to one. Not Q should be its complement zero. And this set state here, our initial conditions, oops, wrong direction. This goes to that one. That guy. Oh man, I'm messing about. Goes to this one. Okay, so that is our set condition. So now, think about active low. If I want to set a set latch, what's going to happen? Well, if it's already set, it'll just stay set. Okay? So, and just think about those dumb cop shows. You know, how many times can you cock a revolver? You know, until you pull the trigger. You know, ideally, if you cock it once, it's going to stay cocked, you know, but sometimes there's dumb cock cop shows that show you show the guy cocking it once twice three times like come on freaking fire it but anyway so back to our discussion here so if a active low set command comes in on our not s right there what's this latch gonna do should stay set okay is this true okay so let's draw a timing diagram well, actually let's just use this pretty diagram right here Okay, so we are in a set condition right here. And now let's go ahead and get rid of this guy. So for a long time, that active low set has been hanging out at one. And it's been doing one, one, one. Then all of a sudden, it drops down to zero. Okay, so now suddenly this guy changes to zero. So it's a set latch. So we shouldn't see anything happen. Does that make sense? Okay, so for our gate one, we've got zero in and a zero in. What's that in NAND land? Zero, zero. 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. That's a 1. And there it is right there. So that's the input to the first gate. That's the input to the first gate. Our output is correct. It stays at 1. OK, so let's check the second gate because things, because they're feeding back to each other, they might change things. Is this correct? OK, from the perspective of the second gate, what's the input? It's a 1 and a one. So we get a zero. Good to go. So what this is stating, when an active low set comes along on a latch that's already set, nothing should happen. Okay. So now that we've checked, it stays set. Yes, it does. Good to go. So now you're hanging out in set land. And we had that transition from a one to a zero. So it's an active low set command. And that active low suddenly disappears. It goes back up to one. So what it's stating is that it was previously set. We sent another command, an active low command. So it was set, already set. We sent an active low command to set a previously set latch. It's going to stay set. Now the active low disappears. What should happen? Well, since you're not asking it to set, it should stay in its previously set condition. So let's check to make sure that's true. So what we're doing here, all we're doing is changing the input here back to one. 
and again, so it's 1, 0 for the input for the first gate. And 1, 0 should give us a 1, which it does. And now the input for the second gate is 1, 1, which should give us a 0, which it does right there. Okay, so what we did was this transition to, it was previously set and it was just hanging out in set land. We gave it an extraneous, i.e. we don't need to set a latch that's already set zero because it's an active low set. Then we went back to a stable state. Basically, the latch stayed the same. It was always in the set state where Q is equal to one. Okay, so... Now you're hanging out in set land where, if we remember right, Q is equal to 1 and not Q is its converse. And suddenly, along comes an active low reset. And that's what this R is here. So an active low reset. So it's just been hanging out here at 1 for this whole time. And sometime past here, it suddenly drops to zero. It's an active low reset. Okay, let's walk through this in a much cleaner diagram because you're going to need it. Okay, so here's our super clean diagram and we are again hanging out in a set state where both inputs are one and our Q is one and our not Q is zero. And what we're talking about here is basically R has been hanging out this whole time Oops, one second. Has been hanging out this whole time as a one. And along comes an active low reset. Okay, so that's what the R stands for. Set, so S, set, R, reset. So active low reset. Okay, this is where it may get confusing. So. This guy changes to a zero, okay? Now, from the perspective of the second gate here, we've got a one and a zero coming in. So one and a zero in NAN land, that's a one. So it changes our not Q to one. And now, what is the input here? For this first gate, well, one and a one. But what's coming out here should be a zero. So it changes that one to a zero. But wait, you should be asking yourself, won't that change this one's input here? It does. So now that if zero is being fed in, a zero NANDed with a zero should be a one. There it is. Okay? So even with the zero, with the feedback, we're good. And this latch has entered the reset state where not Q is one and Q is zero. Okay? So now we're hanging out in reset land. And along comes, or excuse me, along disappears that active low reset. So this was our reset command, our active low reset, right here. Then it suddenly disappears. So let's clean up the diagram again. Okay, so now that the active low, it previous, excuse me, the active low reset. It was a zero right there, but then it disappeared because that suddenly comes back up. So it was a zero, so our active low reset suddenly becomes a one. So if we're already in the reset state, ideally an active low reset disappears, i.e. it goes back to, to one, what should happen here? Well, ideally nothing because it's already reset and it's just saying, okay, just carry on in this stable condition where both inputs are one. Okay, so let's see if that's true now. Okay, in the reset state, 
what is, let's do from the perspective of gate one here, one NANDed with a one should give us a zero right here, which it does. Okay, now from the perspective of the second gate, a zero NANDed with a one should give us a one, which it does. Okay, so once that active low reset disappears, it's going to stay in the stable reset until along comes an active low set command. So we're back up to where we started earlier. So what do you think what's going to happen here when an active low set command comes along to a latch that's in the reset state? Well, it should set. So let's go ahead and try that. Whoops, that's blue. I need black. Okay, so we are in the reset state. And the reset state is again where q is equal to zero, not q is equal to one. And we want to send it an active low set command, i.e., not s goes down to zero. So what's it do? That's a zero. So now from the perspective of the first gate, what's our inputs? Well, it's zero. Nanded with a one. That should give us a one. So that changes there. And now from the perspective of the second gate, what's coming in is a one and it's nanding with a one that should give us a zero actually let's do that in less confusing those should be blue lines sorry about that guys okay so one nanded with a one should give us a zero but wait, you say, that feedback influences the first gate. Absolutely correct. So a zero netted with a zero should give us a one, which is still giving us a one. So we have entered the set state. So we were previously in the reset state. Along came an active low set state, uh, excuse me, active low set command, and it sets the latch. The active low disappears. And we are back in our initial conditions where the inputs are high for an active low SR latch, and we are in the set state where Q is equal to 1. Okay? So basically, what this is saying, all you've got to do is just give it a little pulse of 0 on one input, because it's active low, that's why it's a 0, to get it to change states from set to reset. And you can hang out in that state indefinitely. Okay, so high inputs, one and one on not S and not R, you're always going to be in whatever state you were previously set or reset. Okay, notice I did not include a case where I simultaneously, am, where I'm simultaneously setting and resetting the latch. It's like I'm trying to lock and unlock a door simultaneously. It just doesn't make sense, you know. Why would a six foot tall Wookiee live on a planet with three foot tall Ewoks? It just does not make sense. Okay, so don't lock and unlock. Does anyone get that joke? Okay, so even though I just said it doesn't make sense and don't do it, don't ever simultaneously lock and unlock a door, don't ever simultaneously set and reset a latch. Remember the first time your parents gave you the car keys and I said, don't drive fast? Your first thought as soon as you backed out of the driveway, you're like, let's see how fast mom's minivan can go. Well, let's try something like that. I just told you not to simultaneously apply a set and reset command. Let's drive fast, take chances, and see what happens here. So here we are hanging out in set land, and some joker is deciding to simultaneously send a reset command and a set command. And so what's going to happen here? 
is both these inputs simultaneously go low. Okay, now let's just at random just pick one. Let's just start with the second gate. So what's the input to the second gate? It's zero coming in from this zero, and then it's a one coming in here. So one NANDed with a zero, that's a one, which changes this thing to a one, and then a one NANDed with a zero from the perspective of the second gate, one NANDed with a zero, that's also a one. So what we're getting is a state where Q is 1 and not Q is 1. Nope, not authorized. Okay, so this is basically an invalid condition when you're trying to set and reset a latch simultaneously. Not only is that bad, not only is it Q and not Q simultaneously 1, as if that wasn't bad enough. What happens here when you release the set and reset simultaneously. It's where it stops, nobody knows. You know, you could end up in a set or reset, and depending on gate propagation delays, let's say this gate is faster, you're going to get in one condition. But then maybe this gate's faster, you're going to get in another, uh, another condition that you can't tell. So basically, what I'm set, trying to say is, a simultaneously simultaneously inputting a active low set and reset on an active low SR latch not good because you can end up no no one knows you know even for the same gate for the same chip on a different day it might have a different propagation delay because I don't know maybe it's warmer or something like that okay let's work with some timing diagrams for um, some SR latches here some active low SR latches Okay, so here's our basic active low SR latch, and we've got some signals here. We're starting out on the left side of the axes here with our initial conditions. We're both not S and not R are high, and we're in the set condition where Q is 1. So as the signals propagate, S is just going along, and all of a sudden it says, set that latch. So R doesn't do anything. Uh, not R doesn't do anything. Um, so what happens when the active low set command is delivered to a latch that's already set? Nothing. It's already set. Active low disappears, and we're hanging out for a couple seconds. And because it's set, it's staying set. All of a sudden, an active low reset comes along. What happens? The latch resets. Active low reset disappears, and we hang out for a couple seconds. What does the latch do? It stays in the reset condition until another set command comes along. The latch sets. Got it? And you can, once a latch is set, you can set it, you can set it, you can set it as many times as you want to. It's already set. It's just going to stay it that way. Okay? So that's timing diagram for an active low uh, SR latch. There is such an animal as an active high SR latch. And that all that is is two cross-coupled NOR gates. And I'm not going to go into the the detail that I went with a uh, the active low, but we will do um, a timing diagram of it. Okay, just think. Here, let's go ahead and just draw a timing diagram. Okay, so here's our timing gram diagram for our active high SR latch and we're just hanging out in the set condition. Let's go ahead and give us ourselves our initial conditions here where Q is 1 and because this is an active high 
our initial conditions are low for the uh, for the uh, SNR. And now we're already in a set condition. And let's just say the set command, we're given another set command. So we're setting a previously set latch. It stays that way until a reset command comes along and it goes down to a reset condition. Okay, and you can, again, give as many active high resets as you possibly want to, but as long as it's reset, it stays reset until another set command comes along and you get that. Okay, so uh, again, the don't try to set it and reset it at the same time. You could be in the same state as an active low SR latch um, where who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? Okay, so that is about the basic SR latch. We're going to talk about some modifications to an SR latch to make it um, a little bit more useful and uh, a little bit more fun.